All right. Welcome back, everybody. And thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode, which was once named Ladies of the Empire. But there's actually a club named Ladies of the Empire that we have recently discovered. Um, so we are now known as the Ladies of the Niners. Um, definitely has a nice ring to it, like Lady of the Empire. So if you're looking us up and you just remember Ladies of the Niners, um, that Ladies of the Empire has been copyrighted. And it's actually a women's booster club, nonprofit organization, and it's a pool of ladies that are Niner fans, Niner faithful, helping out in their communities um, and helping with, you know, underdeserved or, excuse me, underprivileged uh, communities and just helping out where, you know, maybe sometimes there aren't the best opportunities given. So shout out to Ladies of the Empire. I'm going to tune in to get some more information on that. But when you're looking for us here on the show, look for Ladies of the Niners. And what I'll do here, I'll drop this a couple of times. But this is, you know, sometimes you have so much fun when you just like make something. It's just like, oh, I want to use this. This is so awesome. So where did I put it? Oh, I think I just put it in my background. Uh -oh. Okay, I'll show it. I'll show it after the show. I'll put us all in the background and then I'll show everybody. But. Yeah, yeah I, tr I try to work on it, so I'll make sure I get that out there for everybody. But today, we're going to start off with breaking news. Debo Samuel. Um, Browns game kind of beat us up a little bit, losing a couple of our great stars. Um, CMC is actually working through the oblique, and it's been confirmed Debo Samuel has a hairline fracture in his shoulder. So he will definitely be out for a few games, and we will most likely not be seeing him until after bye week. How do you ladies feel about this? Well, I think as long as we have CMC, I think uh, we'll be okay. I mean, hairline fracture, it's a tiny fracture, so it's not terrible. Um, but, you know, he'll be out this week, he'll be out next week, and then we have a great time, you know, in just in time with uh, the bye. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully he'll be back after. Um but yeah, I mean, as long as CMC is in there, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll actually um, be a little bit more organized with the offense because the offense looked all over the place against the Browns uh, when Ray Ray and Juwan Jennings came in and, you know, Debo and CMC were out. Um, so I think we'll be, uh, we'll be ready for Monday night. Excellent. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to uh, put it over. Brush up our, yeah, brush up our uh, O-line. Mm -hmm. and uh, get a better chance, a better figure configuration of not having someone in so we don't look like a bunch of lost people on a field. Um, I'm sorry to hear it. I'm just now hearing this from you guys. that I, I saw it earlier on, uh, on an MSN feed, but I didn't have a chance to read it. I just saw Debo injury, and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I already know about that. But I didn't mm -hmm. know about that. So thank you mm -hmm. for enlightening me. Absolutely. But a hairline fracture is nothing to play around with. But uh, if we could have him healed and ready after the bye, which is when we we got to play all those birdies and stuff, um, we'll really need him. <laughs> so um, if we can have him healed by then, that'll be great. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. But I think now is a good time. Uh, and I'm not trying to crack on Jess's man, but... Um, Now's a good time for him to configure, do some configurations when he's not in the lineup. And if you have CMC, uh, use him, but also configure the whole offensive, uh, you know, the, the whole O-line needs to be configured uh, mm -hmm. with Debo out. And um, again, making sure that people aren't lost on the field. <laughs> Absolutely, because we don't need any of that. No. The last game we could see, there wasn't very many. Um, I'm going to put this overlay over us. There was not, not very much offense going on. Um, we have Brock Purdy's um, 12 attempt, or 12 completions out of 27 attempts, only threw for 125 yards for an entire game. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, you know, kept to only 43 rushing yards. Um, Jordan Mason. 27, Ray Ray McLeod looks like 23, Debo only 11, uh, Brock Purdy was that two, 
and Elijah negative three, always 22. So we don't have, um, there was definitely not much going on as far as offense goes. Um, Ayuk, he didn't have the greatest of game. Um, I was actually kind of surprised to see Ayuk and what was happening. What are your ladies' um, thoughts on Ayuk? Was he just having an off game? Think? I think the offense as a whole was. Um, I think this this coming game will be the the bounce back game for them. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just think the offense of, as a whole was just off. They were totally off. There was like no chemistry. There was no uh, cohesiveness with it. Um, yeah, it was just like random. There was no chemistry involved, no gelling, which was shocking. Given uh, what we've seen Ayuk do, and yeah, yeah, he did have some coverage on him, but for him to miss those balls like that, like off the tip of his fingers, I'm just like, <gasps> oh, you know, I, it, there was no chemistry. After that one run with CMC and, and, and then the touchdown, it was just like, you know, everybody's like, yeah. And then all of a sudden it just went kaput. Yeah. The chemistry, the, the, the connectiveness was gone. I don't know what happened, uh, but it was gone. <laughs> yeah, it definitely it took, it took every everything to go wrong for the Browns to win, and we still had an opportunity to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And you know, Jake Moody, he did. He missed. Unfortunately, let me go to that slide. He missed. Two of the field goals, you know, that could have been our six points that we could have definitely had. Um, he attempted three but completed one. He made both his extra point kicks, you know, the one-pointers after the touchdowns. But when it came to the three field goals, he managed to only kick one through the post. Um, even with that being said, with him being responsible for the two missed kicks, um, if you think of all the penalties that the Niners had accumulated during this one game, now, the Browns, they had a lot of penalties as well, which I was actually surprised. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and um, to tell you the truth, the Browns should have had a hell of a lot more penalties on them. I agree. Yeah, we, and, we did a, their one drive, you know, to Sean Gibson's hit, and then the Mooney Ward, you know, I, they were not yeah. flags at all. <laughs> no. no. No, it was a total of 75 yards that we had paid the price for with all these penalties. And I think it was nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different penalties. Yeah. And most of them being from, you know, guys that are, you know, already knowing, you know, how to act and how to prevent hopefully these certain things. But then again, some, you know, refs seem to like to throw the flag a little bit more often. And, you know, you throw the flag for this or that, and then you forget to do the same thing for the other team. You know, sometimes different teams get away with one and sometimes they don't get away with any. But it's always nice when officiating is definitely fair across the board. There's no favoritism. You'd like to believe that nobody's getting paid. I don't want to say the refs Look, are Look, the paid. Three Stooges could have done better. I think so. <laughs> okay. The Three Stooges could have done better at officiating. Mm -hmm. that, that, it was, I mean, dad, gone. How hard. I mean, I know it's a hard game, but really, you're right there looking at it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is Jake Moody's um, like average? Because I think, what was it? He had 41 yards for that one kick that he missed. Was it 41 yards or 40 yards that he missed? And that's why I was wondering, what is like his average? I mean, I know preseason he was doing like 50 something. Um, but like mm -hmm. his average, I mean, I think 40, 35, 40, he should be able to make that, you know, uh, if that's within his range, I should be in his range. Yeah. But I, I don't know, like, I think it's in his range. Yeah, I I don't know like what his 
momentum, like his highest point is, you know, to let's say 40. I know during the uh, preseason, he had a couple like 50s in there, early 50s or something. But yeah, he, he's he's definitely got to get better. I think he was either, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to go by the average, dude. But, you know, I'm just... I'm just trying to get like a feel for what what the man did um, because, you know, 40, 45, 45 minus, you should be able to get, you know. Um, and then I, I was hearing something that he was iced before the game. I don't know if that was true or not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know, but you know, we had a lot of goofy, uh, goofy nail biting mistakes. It cost us some yardage, and some of it was uncalled for. That shouldn't have been ours, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Definitely. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna put another overlay of us. This is just gonna be the defense. This is what our defense did. Can you tell mm. that our defense was missing Dre Greenlaw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gee, were. you think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> they definitely were. It definitely seemed like there was um, a little less explosion. Like you can see that our defense is still the same defense, but it just seemed like they were a little slower. Um, I mean, you can definitely see Warner in the back. He's trying his best to fill in the gaps. You know, when you it's see him running all the way back, back, back a slower. Um, yeah. I mean, you uh -oh. can definitely see I don't know what, um, I don't know if, yeah, it was like everything was just off. You know, it's the, the, the plays that you thought that, you know, the tackles that were going to be made weren't made. Mm -hmm. That's, that's another thing. There were a lot of missed tackles. <laughs> And, mm -hmm. you know, for us to actually win this game Monday night, we got to make sure we tackle. Absolutely. I mean, because for a while, yeah, they were like playing flag football out there for a minute. I'm like, come on, guys, touch them. Like, mm -hmm. knock them down. You know? Absolutely. Be like me. Bite their ankles. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I can reach. Maybe a kneecap. <laughs> Well, it was nice. Um, Randy Gregory, you know, or R Randall, is it Randy or Randall? It's Randy. Randy. Okay. Randy Gregory. He, he did. He made him a sack, you know, so that's nice to see, you know, he's coming in and already setting the tone of knowing exactly where he needs to be in, as far as in place with this defense. And that's yeah. reassuring because I'm looking forward to seeing him kind of like, you know, just seeing him on the opposite side of Bosa is kind of refreshing because it's like, well, maybe this guy can compliment Bosa. Maybe they could just keep up with each other and it just be like a, yeah. the greatest yeah. dynamic duo that we have with defensive ends. And that's what I'd like to see. I mean, because I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't think they were going to put him in. I really didn't think they were going to put him in, uh, you know, once they acquired him. But to see him get out there and actually step it up and do what he had to do, I mean, my God, that one hit, I was like, ooh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Did he just do that? You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad. That we had. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was glad that he came out and 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 just like you know knocked the crap out of the person. I was like, yeah, boy, okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. So here's a question from the chat from John Lahoy. Uh -oh. Jess, what day is tomorrow for Kittle? Tomorrow <laughs> is National Tight Ends Day. Uh oh. <laughs> Love myself a tight end. Ah. <laughs> that is super awesome. <laughs> I, I'm I'm definitely expecting to see um, Kittle. And like you know, it's like you could tell when he's you. It's hard to specifically say which game it's going to be, but you almost have a feeling because just knowing exactly how he can produce and what he's capable of, and you know, just making 
plays happen and just getting in between some of those nasty spots to make that ball just mm -hmm. where it's supposed to be. It's, I think here soon, especially I think with Debo being out, I think that's going to make a lot of our offense kind of step it up a little bit, especially with, you know, when you're relying on between CMC and Debo and now you have Debo out. So CMC is going to have to be putting in more work and hopefully the other guys will help step in to give CMC that, you know, that momentum break. So we don't necessarily miss a beat, but he's not getting too beat up. Right. Right. I think, uh, you know, if, if George Kittle, I always say this on uh, the East Coast Running Bowl podcast, you know, if, you know, good things happen when the ball's in George Kittle's hands. And uh, if he gets targeted at least five times, I think we're in good shape. I mean, the Dallas game, he was targeted three times and, and those times he had three touchdowns. Um, right. You know, so, I, you know, the fact that he needs, you know, he was targeted once against the Browns. Uh, I think it was for one yard or whatever it was. It was, you know, if he, like I said, if he gets at least five targets a game, I think, I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah. And the thing about that is too, is like, you got to remember where he is on the field and get it to him. Yeah. Um, because yeah, he'll get the, he'll get the yardage. And the other good thing too, he kind of takes takes the defense with them you know they don't know what to do with them you know they try to surround them and knock them down or tackle them and he can't you know and he takes half of the defense with him and i love that because let's say let's say he you know he, he's open but yet all the all of a sudden he's not open all right then you got somebody like Ayuk or jennings down the field didn't you say okay George is covered. He's got half the defense running with him. I'm going to go this way over to Ayuk. I'm going to go over here to Jennings. Everybody seems to like not keep their eye on Jawan Jennings. That's what makes him I'm, great. That's what I'm, and it's just like, how do you not see this big tall dude, you know, wide open, you know, or like he's 10 yards down the line. And it's like, oh, there's another 49er down there. Let me run and catch him. Ah, oh, it's Jawan Jennings. Oh, snap. He's got a touchdown. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Whack, whack. Yeah. It's your loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's – I really appreciate Jawan Jennings because even though I don't believe he's utilized as often as he is, I believe he is utilized in the best way he can offer for this team because – when we don't have Ayu, Gardivo, or Kittle catching the ball, it is nice to say that we have Jennings, who you can count on. And yeah, just right. like anybody, sometimes there's a few drops, but you can definitely tell from you know we've uh, you know acquired him till now. He's definitely earned his spot as you know wide receiver, and he's gained the trust of the offense. So mm -hmm, as long as mm -hmm, he just keeps mm -hmm. up, it's gonna definitely be an awesome um, piece for us to use because. Uh, this is where it gets interesting. You know, it's yes. like, I was thinking, you know, I knew the Browns were going to be one of those, you know, sliding scale kind of deals. It was kind of like, you can go either way. We're either going to win this or lose this, but I didn't think we we're going to lose this way. Like I didn't know exactly how we were going to lose either, but yeah. Yeah. It was it just, just like my like, momentum. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it's like no momentum. Like, I don't get it. Like right after that touchdown, it was just like, you know, everybody got like all psyched up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to do this. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was just like. Yeah. After that, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, what team am I looking at here? You know? And Mason, he's, he, I think he's understanding that he's next man up because Elijah Mitchell, he lost his three yards with the last game. You know, so it's like, we don't need running backs to not get us many yards or yeah lose. yeah we just we need somebody to keep moving the chains and even if you can only carry the ball for you know two yards that's not going to get us very far if we're relying on you for three downs four downs but i mean just not the negatives don't don't right. make us lose the yards we're you know there's been too many times we're stuck in those third and long situations you're like third and 25 or something you're like Gee, okay like oh, really that's, that's <laughs> behind the sticks for 
you know, most of the game. Like, and as you know, as yeah. the uh, the analyst said, you know, second and forever, third and forever. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. So that you know, we have to we have to be mindful of that on Monday. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If I wasn't at a sports bar, I probably would have threw my beer at the TV. But you know, since I didn't own a TV, I didn't do that. Because <laughs> <Yeah. So. laughs> I would say, "Shut up." <laughs> yeah, I definitely yeah. want to see Mason utilize a little bit more because, um, you know, what's happening is we can see it. It's like every time we come up against, you know, when you're playing against another team for three about three hours of a day they're bound to try to figure you out somehow or another. And if you're mm -hmm. continuously doing the same thing, you're not leaving, um, you're not leaving a safety buffer for yourself because once these teams or the defenses start figuring out our offense, it's like, Oh, well, we just stopped your run before it even happened. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it and, and just don't, don't slap me. <laughs> um, slap me from afar. <laughs> I think Jim Schwartz got in Shani's head. I really do. Yeah, I mean, it's kind um, of equivalent to, you know, Kyle Shanahan with Sean McVeigh, you know? Right. In a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more comical with McVeigh, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what a lot of that happened. Um, the other thing, too, is like, I don't see, and I'm trying not to be a negative Nancy about it, but I really do not see a bright future for Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell. I as much it. as I love him, mm -hmm. um, I don't see a bright future for him here. Not between the injuries and then what happens when he's out there is just like, I want to see him do one good game. Mm -hmm. You know, bow your head, you know, bend your head down, go in with your shoulders and run. Get that low run in, uh, which he's good for. Um, but I, in my heart of hearts, I'm just like, damn, is this going to be the last year I see you here? And it's kind of hard you because it's like, he had the situations where he's been injured, but it's like once he's done with that injury bug, if assuming he, you know, hopefully will be over that, is he going to start producing 2021 years with other teams or better? You know, so it's like you can't hold on to him forever, especially if you're trying to build on this stout run game that we seem to be dominating with and relying on. So mm -hmm. you almost need to be better than Mitchell. I just, I'm really hoping that this is a year that he actually can, you know, even now, if he can just somehow get back into his football shape. This yeah. Yeah. Get back into that groove again. You know, like you're um, running, like be more of a running back. <laughs> run, <laughs> run Forrest, run. <laughs> you know, um, the other thing too, which shocked me is uh, the utilization of uh, juice. Yeah. Um, I like seeing him more involved. So mm -hmm. do I. And it's long overdue. It is. <laughs> it's long overdue. And I'm glad, you know, I was glad to see him get utilized and, and get the plays. Um, because again, he's another hidden gem mm -hmm. that people, you know, tend to overlook, you know, uh, now, if he was Tom Rathman, they wouldn't overlook him. They'd be all over him. <laughs> but yeah, I would, too. I'm just saying. But um, <laughs> I have his jersey. Um, to see Juice being utilized and he actually completes the play and then some, it's like, ha -ha. that's our <laughs> secret weapon. Yeah, he has, he has great hands. Um, you know, he's very reliable. Um, so I would definitely like to see him involved more. And hey, we may see that Monday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And that'll be actually really interesting because, you know, again, just keep them guessing. Keep the defenses guessing because 
I mean, we already know we're struggling with the offense that we have. And even as fans, we're like, okay, we know we have something decent we're working with. But, you know, maybe it's not as full strength as, you know, some other offenses, obviously. But, you know, when you have different weapons, we should be utilizing them so that way we can make sure every avenue is being explored instead of like, oh, I wonder how this would have turned out if we would have used, you know, juice this game or right, how it right, would have turned right. out with Juwan Jennings right. or. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I'm I, interested to see. I mean, I haven't really noticed too much about uh, the Vikings and uh, their offensive line, but from what I'm hearing, it's almost virtually non-existent. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct. <laughs> um, but we have to, we can't take it for granted. No, absolutely not. Um, even with, I think, what's his name, Patty Patterson or something like that. Um, or I think he's a wide receiver or running back. But um, he's out. He's on the IR. And yeah. I know there's yeah. uh, Jefferson, their wide receiver. Jefferson. There we go. Jefferson. Oh, really? And yeah. I think it's um, Addison, I think, is their second runner up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I know there's two other guys, but Addison, I think, is the one we're going to have to pay attention with because. Um, he's their number two, and they've been using him apparently. And obviously, we could see what their scores are and how many games they've won so far. But you know, again, we yeah. just don't want our team going in there sleeping on you know some of these players, even if the offensive line looks like trash. You know, some of those teams have gems. Mm-hmm. Like the same thing with the Browns. Like, who did they really have? And they had they had enough to work with, and they mm-hmm. made it happen. Unfortunately, the Niners, but. Yeah, definitely- and that's what yeah, that's what we have to be mindful of. I mean, we just can't go in, you know. We're not we're not cocky like the like the cowgirls, so we can't go in with that kind of attitude. Um, we just had to go in there and just do it, just do it, and keep the chemistry going. For God's sake, it looked like a looked like. Charlie Brown playing the Archies or something, you know, there was no, <laughs> I know I'm dating myself, but um, <laughs> all right. Charlie Brown, and let's say Warner brother cartoons. Um, <laughs> there was no, uh, <laughs> there was no balance. And I'm not sure now, you know, I am getting older. So, you know, I can't remember everything, but the Vikings playing a dome, right? Yes. Okay. So there should be no problem. And their um, their left guard is actually out. Uh, left guard? Yeah. Ooh. That's actually pretty huh. good because I think that would be uh, that's side, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's almost like their uh, like their little dominant side there, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, that's good. That'll compensate for our right side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need Bex to bring shake her dirt, man. Shake that Absolutely. dirt. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, def- she's done it already. <laughs> okay. no, All man. right. Doing it a lot yeah, we definitely need. <laughs> yeah, shake the dirt, man. Because I, I just... Um, I'm not going to say it's going to be a blowout, but I, I think it's going to be a really tight game. And it's going to be between a defense. Because, I mean, our offense is already going to show up. Mm-hmm. But our defense, and apparently their defense, which, like, from what I understand, is almost non existent, too. Um, but their secondary isn't. So, <laughs> you know, we got to really pay attention. You just not a time to be complacent. Um, yes, David, my McNiner. That's my name for him, okay? He's my <laughs> McNiner. Um, I, too, am concerned about Trent's injury um, because we need him. But I don't think he's going to be – I don't think it's going to be too bad. I'm hoping, 
I'm uh, I'm not concerned, um, and I don't think the team is either. Um, I think the team thinks they're in a pretty good spot um, to rest him. Um, Cause don't forget it's uh, you know, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon um, mm-hmm. for as far as like playoffs go. And, and luckily it's a low ankle sprain as opposed to a high ankle sprain. Um, but Thank I, God. Yeah. Cause I think the high ankle sprain, he would definitely be out probably the same yeah. as, uh, as Devo. Mm-hmm. But um, I, you know, I think we'll be good with Jalen Moore. Um, I, I think we'll be ready, you know, because we know the injuries that, you know, we have and, you know, yeah. but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I know Melissa had a question, I think about blocking. Blocking? With George Kittle, Kittle or oh. Yeah. Um, I think both. Because uh, mm-hmm. given how Juwan Jennings had that one block um, mm-hmm. against the Browns and he pretty much like pancaked the guy and George Kittle does the same thing. So I think they'll each have their turn against going mm-hmm. against uh, Daniil Hunter. So that should be a fun little matchup. That's definitely going to be fun. Yeah. And I, I do want so. to talk about uh, Brock Purdy for just maybe a few minutes. Okay. There are a couple things that I had noticed. Well, for one, you know, I understand that he's still, you know, trying to adjust to everything. He's doing fabulous. But I know that there are certain things that he's trying to work on, such as, you know, make sure you look downfield, make sure, you know, before you get rid of the ball, if assuming that you can do so safely, uh, you know, check to make sure you don't have anybody wide open downfield, especially when it means trying to make positive traction. Um, so I'm hoping that this coming up game and the games from here on out, he's a little bit more um, aware of what's going on on the field especially with who's on the field that he can be getting that ball to, especially if he likes the thought of giving everybody a chance or opportunity with the ball. He likes to spread the ball around from what he says. So, you know, just be a little bit more aware to who's on the field. Um, Don't go so blind under the pressure because, you know, you have to trust in your line. And hopefully they just stay strong for you long enough to get that ball where it needs to go. But two, did you ladies see that pass? It was in, I think, the fourth quarter. It was like third or fourth quarter, but it was like a Patrick Mahone boy pass. It was a mm-hmm. slide. I don't know what kind of throw that was, but it was not your average over the shoulder throw. It was kind of like going mm-hmm. down on the side. Little slide that, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Little, little pass. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was actually really pleased to have seen that because, um, I mean, if Patrick Mahomes boy does it and it works great for him, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, obviously Purdy's not Patrick Mahomes, but if these young guys can essentially learn something that these other pros are doing, why not? You know, and that was, it was in, it was a beautiful completed pass. So um, I think that pass was completed. There was so many incomplete passes. It's kind of hard. (laughs) it, that was that was like the terrible part about it. It's like, oh man, all these wonderful passes, and it, they just had us covered. They, you know, they just our guys were just covered. Yeah, now, there were a couple passes too that were thrown that I thought were going to be missed, but were actually caught. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh, now how come you don't do instant replay on that? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> That's what we need to see. Like, how did he do that? Um, Especially when um, Brock is under pressure. Mm -hmm. I respect the way he stood his ground with the pressure. There are a few moments he started to, you know, tap dance like Jimmy, and I was getting a little worried. Don't pick up the tap dance shoes. But then... He stood his ground in a pocket, scrambled when he had to, uh, but he withheld the pressure. You know, he stayed with the pressure. And and that, I think, is what saved us from getting, from the Browns getting more points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, His movement in the pocket is getting better. It's not, it's a little nerve wracking. I'm not going to lie. It's a little nerve wracking, but it's getting better. And um, I'm glad to see that as opposed to, you know, 
standing there and tap dancing and then boom, you're eating grass. Yeah. No. I want yeah. that. No, no, uh, uh, no. So we have but a I question. Think we have here. a good chance. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say we have a question from the chat from Melissa. Um, Ronnie Bell or Braden Willis is most likely to get some play on Monday. I'm going to say Ronnie Bell. Hey, Bell. The, the injury to Debo. Um, so I think we'll definitely uh, definitely see him out there. Uh, Braden Willis, I don't think um, if there's an injury to, let's say, Ross Dwelly or Charlie Warner, um, I think that's when we would see Braden Willis, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, to answer that question, I think it's Ronnie Bell. So do I. One, his speed. Uh, two, his agility, his agility and, and, and ability to catch the ball. Um, and, and that's what's, that's what's needed with, with Debo not being in the lineup. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would definitely say Ronnie Bell too. And that actually would be quite exciting to get to see a little bit more of Ronnie Bell. And, you know, I know it's hard to pass the ball around, but, you know, when you have chances like these where, unfortunately, Debo will have to sit up the game, it kind of allows us to kind of explore the depth a little bit more and kind of get them in the shape of things. So, you know, if you want to rest your guys, at least they can get out there with your second stringers and still manage to complete and win another game, you know, even though you already know you're going to win, but. But, you know, that's the good thinking. thing about it, though, because we can compensate mm -hmm. for someone not being in a lineup. We have enough weaponry to compensate. Now, whether or not they're going to do exactly like that person who's out, that's one thing. But they can compensate. It's, it's, you know, it's not something that's going to sit back and go, oh, no, what are we going to do? No. You have somebody who can back it up. And that's one of our strengths because a lot of players may be, let's say, a running back, but they can do other positions too. So we have that leverage uh, that I'm not saying that, you know, we're a lead in that, but we have that leverage that a lot of other teams don't. And I think that's important. Um to realize and, and to understand that if something happens, yes, we don't like to see it, but we can compensate for it. Now, I want to see CMC in there. I do. An oblique is nothing to play with. But I don't want anybody like using that as his Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't seen all of him yet. You know, um, I was at that first game, the game that he, uh, when he first came out uh, over to the uh, Niners. And uh, I was a little nervous because I didn't know what to expect from the dude, you know, coming from Carolina. I didn't... He rocked my world. I was just like, damn, look at this guy go. I it, and he just got out there and said, Choom! he's gone. They didn't know what to expect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep telling people, expect the unexpected. Anything can happen on a given Sunday. But we have the weaponry to do it. So expect the unexpected. And I think we got a good shot this week. I think, um, you know, last week's game was a, a time for uh, some humble, uh, humble pie, some humble thoughts. Yeah. 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 You know, but, um, <laughs> it wasn't like we got beat to the Jets. No, uh, <laughs> sorry. I was screaming up and down Roosevelt Boulevard. A friend of mine told me that it says, Dina, the Eagles lost. I said, are you kidding me? Yeah, they only they lost by six points. I said, we only lost by two. <laughs> so I, I put the windows down. I said, ah, you damn pigeons, you lost. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the cop just looked at me like. 
<laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, you too. <laughs> that makes going into this week a lot nicer. Like, you know, you can't sit there and say you're still undefeated. Like, no, you are defeated. So, yeah. So do we fear CMC being rushed back in and forced into the red zone so he can continue his streak of consecutive touchdowns? I don't think uh, being back is a thing. Um, if he's hurt, he's hurt. He can't go. If he's, you know, good, he'll go. Um, I guess it all depends on when he takes his, you know, first hit uh, to see where he's at. Um, but I definitely think he'll be fine. And they don't really look too much of, you know, con you know, oh, let's get him in there so he can continue his streak and, you know, and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, it's not really the type of organization that does that. Um, yeah. you know, it's not like their number one thing that they think about, mm -hmm. but, um, I think it'll be good. I think so. I mean, I like to say safety first, you know, obviously if you don't feel like playing like, you know, a doctor's orders, like, Hey man, I suggest you sit this one out Then definitely sit it out. Now, if it is something that you are positive and comfortable with playing through and, you know, getting that specific title, uh, or record is something that's important to you, uh, then yeah, by all means, go for it. He's only like two or three touchdowns away. So just like two or three more games, if he played just one touchdown each game, um, he'll be a 1964 record um, from Lenny. I can't think of his last name, but I, I know he played for the Baltimore Colts and he has a 1964 record of the most consecutive um, touchdowns and or most consecutive games with the touchdown. And I think he was at 18 games. Um, okay. And right now CMC's at 15. So he's only about three away. Not that that is specifically important because there's other years that he can do that when he's feeling probably healthier. But when you have something like that, to me, I feel, why not add it to your resume? Yeah. Yeah. But don't hurt yourself to trying to do it either. Absolutely. That's, you know, number one because you're more you important know. here healthy than you are yeah so yeah <laughs> i'd rather have you healthy and break a record definitely you know <laughs> you got a long season ahead of us i mean this is what game seven now so you know we <laughs> you got you got a couple of chances there buddy so don't yeah you, know, you don't don't stress it definitely so Melissa says, I try to keep up with the chat. I do want to shout out everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, your participation here, uh, your coverage, your patronage, you know, just your support uh, makes everything great when we're talking Niner football. And that's what makes our 49er faithful community such a great community to be a part of because it's ever growing, always loving. Um, you never know what to expect. And, you know, there's different types of Niner fans everywhere and, Shout out to you. Shout out to us. Shout out to the Niners. Red and gold's the way to be. Hey. But Martha says, Nick Bosa and Kyle Shanahan both said they had forgotten the loss protocol because it's been too long. They hadn't had to go and break down the NFCC one the very next week. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah. So it's so a first time for everything. Definitely exciting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we are going to be heading into, I want to put another overlay. We're going to be heading into next week. Um, this is the most recent injury report. Um, so here we have everybody who is listed with an injury and whether they participated or not. It uh, looks like Aaron Banks, he had the ankle injury, um, but he had full participation practice um, Saturday, which oh, today, uh, Dre Greenlaw, he had limited practice. Christian McCaffrey, limited practice. Debo Samuels, obviously out. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Williams, he did not participate and is doubtful to play in this coming up game. Isaiah Oliver, he had a knee injury, but he had full participation in Saturday's um, training. And George Odom also had a quadricep injury, but he Ooh. had full participation as well. So we'll have some of these guys, um, you know, as long as they rest up, we'll see what happens. And then this is what next week's list or this Monday's list looks for the Vikings. So it looks like they're going to be missing their guard, a cornerback, a linebacker, and a wide receiver. 
And then obviously mm. their other uh, running back or wide receiver, I think is wide receiver. So I think we have definitely a, um, a positive week to look for. Obviously, we're not undefeated, but I do believe that we are looking at a win. I don't want to shoot my horn too bad, but, you know, it's like we're playing against Kirk Cousins, who is a very overrated quarterback. He can get the job done, but I believe he's overrated. And I do want to see Fred Warner in our defense smack him silly, just beat their whole team up, and then look at him and tell him after we get the win, you like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I Fred Warner was just all over the place. He was just all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I think like Hufanga. That's a bad dude. I mean, he's going to be like on them like crazy. Um, and they're both active in the backfield. Like the entire time yeah. they're both adjusting and paying attention and it's really nice but you know when when fred caught that ball at interception i just saw td all the way down i'm saying okay we got it we got this it's a td he's gonna run it in mm-hmm. try it happen. yeah <laughs> yep. if, if but, also made that block it would have been a touchdown yeah 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 exactly exactly and that's what, uh, but yeah, I, as soon as I saw him catch it, I was just like, oh yeah, this is going to be a touchdown. This is going to be a touchdown. He was moving. Um, and that's one thing that I've always admired about him was just his, not only can he hit like the Dickens, but his speed. I mean, I don't know if he's got roller skates on or some kind of like hoverboard while he's out there, but his speed is just off the chain. I couldn't believe how he can go from one side of the field to the other and a boom. Like split seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say that the, the Vikings got their money, you know, like, you know, they're going to be like, ooh, we got to play the big bag 49ers. But you do. Because it's redemption time, and we sucked up the loss. We got ourselves humble. Take it a game at a time. And, um, you know, let's, let's just do it. There should not be a reason. And like you said, Kirk Cousins... I didn't even know he was still playing. I oh, thought he had retired, oh. like went out to quarterback pasture somewhere. Um, I, <laughs> he's like a werewolf. Okay, Randy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I didn't even know he was, I thought he was somebody's third string. I, I had no idea he was still <laughs> playing. <laughs> Yeah, the only reason why he's a Viking is because he's on his last year with the contract. Um, yeah, I believe okay. you know, the Vikings have filled in Kirk Cousins' spot with anybody better. So they're just like, all right, we're going to try you until. But I do believe I see them. Um, I see the Vikings getting a quarterback this coming up draft, depending on you know what selection there is. Oh, but- I'm sure. I'm sure they are. They 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 would ha- they would be like stupid not to. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the, the, the guy's arm is just going to last for so long. So, yeah, I mean, he, they would have to be, like, really goofy not to. Um, But I think it's going to be a good matchup. I really think it's going to be a good matchup where our O-line, and I'm thinking about that, <laughs> that dreaded right side, <laughs> If we can compensate for that part and everybody does their part, oh, it's going to be on. And and what's his name? McKivitz? I'm going to have to talk to him. <laughs> We're going to have a little talk in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a good matchup, though. 
I think this game, we uh, actually get back into the 30-point range. Um, that would be nice. I think we actually, I think we actually, well, I know we're going to win, but I think we actually win 30 to 17. And the uh, the duo behind me, Purdy to Kittle, that's going to be the money duo Monday Night Football. I like it. I like it. I didn't think you were going to go like that low down to 17, though. Uh yeah, I could see that. I was going to say like 20. <laughs> 30 to 20, maybe. But yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be it because they're going to have to, they're going to have to really use Juice and George. And I'm just psyched. Um, I'm given, uh, I just hope I'm in the right condition to to watch the game okay i'm gonna put this out there i'm 59 years old and i have my first damn cavity oh, you know wow. i'm pissed oh, okay wow. yeah okay I, it, pain i was ready to rip my jaw off just to see what the hell it was <laughs> um but yeah i i have they're gonna take the tooth out monday <laughs> i said can you <laughs> Will I be able to drink beer by eight o'clock <laughs> by eight twenty? So I'm like, no. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna use a straw. How's that? <laughs> How about oh, vodka? Can I, can I put vodka some? Yeah, can I put some vodka in my mouth? You know, keep it disinfected. No, I've been on antibiotics all week, so they better That's not be. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, I'll be in the right frame of mind without a bunch of cotton in my mouth or whatever i don't know it's crazy hope the novocaine wears off oh yeah yeah man it, i never had that stuff before i was drooling on the way home i didn't <laughs> even know it i'm driving down the road and i get home and there's this giant stain on my shirt and i'm like i'm not lactating what the hell is this and i realized <laughs> i'm drooling and what made it worse? It was one of my 49er shirts. Oh no. Ah, I have a, a Henley, you know, with the with the three-quarter sleeves. Mm-hmm. So on the S on the 49er side, there's this this drool mark that just looked like a cascade of Niagara Falls. So I had no idea I was driving. <laughs> Put a smile on someone's face that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god. Calories are no joke. That's that's very painful, especially on game day when you know you just want to yell and drink. It's like, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I find, you know, I know it's not recommended, but. It, I've had some really bad pain in my mouth. I've had some bad teeth and I've gotten them fixed and I still have to go back in for a couple of others. But sometimes I'll drink me a beer with my pain meds. I know it's not recommended, but when you need a supercharge and you need that damn pill to kick in, you're like, okay, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me, but get rid of this pain. It works. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not recommended. No. But the pain is unbearable. It is. And it is. And and now I'm looking at baseball from Phillies and Arizona, and they're getting on my nerves. But they're all winning. Okay. <laughs> For now. Well, mm. I'm gonna put the homework way over over the top of us, and we're gonna get ready for Week Seven. What's everybody's score predictions? I know Jess had hit us with a 30 to 17. Um, I actually yeah. really like that. I really like that. I like that. I would still say 30, uh, I'll go 30 to 20. 30 to 20? Yeah. Nice. I, I'm seeing a 27-17. You know, sometimes there seems to be like 10-point leads and the Niners can get, and I'm hoping they get one and they keep it, and they just take home this W on a nice Monday night. Yeah, that fact mm -hmm. that Randy dropped, um, you know, Kirk Cousins 1-9 and nine on Monday, so hopefully we have a great chance to make him 1-10. Oh, really? Yep, he's one win, nine losses on Monday night. So I'm hoping we can okay. add to that nine and make it 10 for him. 
Yeah. Have it, even, yeah. With, even out your losses, buddy. <laughs> Just don't win. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> I have to get one. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, this, I love this logo, but I like your logo better. I, I like that. Oh, nice. So it's all it's all white with the the red SF. I love that. I have to get one. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Red yeah, yeah. Resonance. yeah. Cool hats. I was able to buy a bright one, like a nice white one. I forget the name of it. You know, they all have like their little like the stick or yeah. You know, but I got him a white mm. one with with the little red SF on it, and he really loves it. I think he needs another one. I have to get me one too. And I have one okay. little hat. I wear it, but sometimes like I'll wear like the female hats, you know, it's just like the little regular ball cap, but my mm -hmm. hair down here like pops out and it's just like, what the hell is going on? So I, I like yeah. to wear the hats because it'll like cover my hair and I don't it see fits the better. Like, it does. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe I have a big head. I don't know. But that lady's cap, really cute, but just, I don't like the business right here. Like puff balls no. of hair out of my head. Like, ew. <laughs> So my hair is okay, Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all bad. <laughs> but I'm definitely looking forward to this Monday night's game. It feels kind of odd, you know, not having a game this Sunday. So yeah. it's all right. Yeah. We gotta wait an extra day to be able to see if our Niners win. Um, okay, Dawn dot Dawn is saying 37 28. You go, nice. girl. Whoa. Okay. Let's see. Steve says 21 to 13. Bryant 35-24. Go Don. Okay. 37-28. Love it. Oh, I love it. All right, Don. I'm gonna sell hats that say Jimmy. <laughs> oh, <poor Jimmy. laughs> that poor guy. Oh. <laughs> That'd be and taken to the hurt. hospital, an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, his back. Injury, I don't know how bad that was, but yeah, enough to get yeah. him checked out. Hopefully he's fine. Yeah. 42 to 13, Melissa. 25 to 10, John. These are some. Okay, John. Great. Great. Yeah, these are. I'm definitely looking forward to it because, oh, come on, Purdy. Let's do another Purdy 30 game. Let's see that offense light up and that defense get a little better. And oh, I think he will. No I think he will. Yeah, Probably he's learned. He's learned. He's learned stuff, right? And then Definitely. you know, if not, then then Jess is going to get out there and attack him. You know, and <laughs> Beck's going to stand over him with the dirt. You know, so, next <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I can see this here, Derek. Don't make me use it on you. <laughs> That's yeah, great. You know, I, I think we. I think this is going to be a good game, though, and it's going to be a telltale sign of who we are and what we can do. We're back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just had to share that. That's funny. <laughs> You know, I, I did. I picked him up. I don't have him anymore on my, um, I think it was my Yahoo Fantasy League. But I did. I picked up Jimmy Garoppolo on my bench. I had, at one time, three quarterbacks. But then I dropped him because, you know, he just got injured and just wasn't scoring many points. So I was like, but I had this feeling. I had this feeling that he would end up coming back somehow. And, like, having, like, this great year with the Raiders. And I'm just like, you watch. Just like, you know, even Bebop said his name earlier today. Jarek McKinnon, he bothers the hell out of me. I don't know this man personally. He doesn't know me. Yeah. You left our team playing like crap, and then all of a sudden. And now you you're balling. Game. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I... yeah. Shame on <laughs> I know. I know. Like, you I'm look already... great. In... <laughs> yeah, I'm already, like. Thinking every time I see him, I just want to grip my teeth sometimes. Like, you know, uh, dude. <laughs> but that's a oh. lot of them now. You know, that's a lot of players. Definitely. Well, if you ladies have anything like last thoughts you'd like to share with everybody before we get any 
get up out of here and enjoy the rest of our Saturday. Go One thing I want to say. Oh, no, go ahead, Jess. I'm sorry. No, my my only thing. Go Niners. Let's get this dub. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and and one thing I just want to say, I I've been getting some flack from people who are telling me uh, you're 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 not a Niners fan if you down our team. I said, let me tell you something. I've been a fan of this team before you were probably conceived, <laughs> and I'm going to stay with them. And I have earned mm -hmm. my stripes to say when they suck and when they don't suck. Okay. If I wasn't a diehard Niner, you think I'd be sitting here with all this and wearing this after all these 40, 50 years? <laughs> so don't tell me that I'm not, an, uh, I'm not a team player just because I said they suck. I've earned the stripes to say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm still going to ride and die with my red and gold. <laughs> Very good. Can't argue with that. That's for sure. No. Go Niners. Absolutely. Thank you again, everybody, for stopping by, tuning in. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you missed part of it coming in, you only caught the end of it or middle, whatnot, please feel free to go back and watch us again. Um, again, when you're looking for us, it's no longer Ladies of the Empire. It is Ladies of the Niners. I'm going to drop this over us, ladies. Let everybody know when you're looking for us. It's a new name, same time, same channel, same great ladies. And with that, I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. And go Niners. And we will definitely see everybody again here real soon.